So to start, can you tell me a little bit about the audition process and what you had to audition with? Um, I was actually shooting another movie uh, when they sent me the script, so um, they sort of, they, they didn't say they were, they wanted me to do it, but they said, we're interested in having you maybe do this film, and would you fly to Toronto to meet with Harold and read over a couple of scenes? So I uh, flew in on a Saturday and met Harold, and they were already in production, like they were already, uh, the production offices were set up. We went into a conference room and talked a little bit, and I read two scenes, and then they brought me down for like wardrobe fitting, so it was like a weird... So more of an offer, not, not so much an audition there. It was it it was a version of an audition, um, but I you know I felt like there was uh, like they sort of they liked the idea I guess of me doing it. When and when I came in, when you is, went in, did you know what it was at all? Had you read the book? I hadn't read the book. Uh, I read the script on the plane on the way there. Um, so you know, just had an idea of what I wanted to do with the character, which is what we talked about, and then. Um, yeah, I mean, we just sort of had the same idea. It's nice to walk into a situation where you feel like they want you to succeed rather than, like, prove it, you know? Like, let's prove that you can do this. I, I felt more like he really wanted it to work. And I think the idea of me doing it had been sort of thrown around for a while, but um, I don't know, it just sort of happened. That must have been very encouraging, and ultimately the director makes the decision. But I Correct. imagine there must be a degree of confidence on your end. So what did you think to yourself made you ready for this role? Well, I think just when I read it, I was just sort of like, you know, you read some things and you're like, this is a big stretch for me, or this is really going to take a lot of uh, work to sort of lose a lot of parts of my personality and find other parts of it. This I just read and I was like, this is kind of, especially where I was in my life, it was kind of a no-brainer. Um, I kind of was in the right, I'd been working, which so my, whatever that muscle is that was working, uh, just being comfortable with the day-to-day -day of like working on the character was already in there but you know I, I just sort of had a you know so I just had a feeling and I felt like Harold wanted wanted me to succeed and wanted me to do it so when you walk into a room like that it sort of makes the whole process a little easier and how was that feeling going from there to set then because I imagine you got to set and had some confidence too or was yeah I mean I, I, I I try to have had all the, the work done before I go to set. So by the time we get to set, I hopefully have you know done as much of the legwork of figuring out who the guy was. I wouldn't say I'm confident on set, but I, you know I'm I'm certainly confident that we're going to get what we need. Um, it may not be the first take, uh, and it may need, it may require some like tinkering, which we did a lot of on this. You know, if a scene wasn't working, we would all collectively get together and say, okay, let's find out what isn't working or what we need to add a little bit more of or whatever. Just felt like a like a big movie being made in a very sort of independent way, which was really nice. Jamie told me there was some improvisation, which seems unusual for a film of the scale. Yeah, there was. I mean, we, like I said, we were just we were just trying to make a good movie. So if there were moments that we needed a little bit more of something or a little bit less of something, we just, Harold was not, you know, crazy about like, it has to be this, it has to be this. And I think once he got to know us as people and as the characters, I think different parts of ourselves were sort of interwoven into what was the, the, the script and so it made it, you know, it was, it was fun. It's one of the most fun uh, jobs I've ever, I've ever done. How is it getting to work with all these people and be casual but then jump into these characters? Are there ever overlaps? Yeah, I mean, in fairness, I think we all resemble the, you know, Jamie's a smart ass. Lily's like strong and cool and Robbie's kind of jokester and dicks around a lot and I'm like a little older, so I'm like a little more like, okay, let's, you know, let's, come on, let's get together, we gotta like, you know, we're, we're about to roll, everyone like, you know, spit your gum out. Um, but so we have, inherently, the, the characters are a lot of us anyway, so the overlap sort of would come with, you know, Jamie's one of my best friends, so the stuff we have together is not, I don't have to work on like my relationship with Jamie in order to create that. And I didn't have to work on being able to like needle Lily because I love her; she's like my sister. But you know, there was no like like kid gloves put on with anyone. We just sort of were with each other. So um, 
you know, we looked for each other for, not critiques, but like, you know, I would always look over across it, you know, whether it's Lily or Jamie or whomever and sort of get a sense as to like whether it worked better another way or, and obviously alongside with Harold, but you know, it's it's nice when everyone's on the same page and they're just collectively trying to make good movies. And how about in terms of everybody's own process? I'm sure all of you guys have your own methods on set and the types of direction you like to get. Did yeah. anybody have anything extreme that kind of stuck out? Not really. No, I mean, I, I also... I think it depends on what you're doing. I mean, for specific scenes, or you know, there's... I have a couple of scenes in the movie that are pretty heavy, and for those specific things, I went about my process the right way but other right. stuff you're just running around and like you know cutting a cutting a vampire's head off it's like you don't need to be like centered in your craft as you're like ready to, to run into the hallway to, to go do that so you know there's a time and a place and, and we all were respectful of each other's times and places because uh, you know again the movie only works if we're all great in it so we were we were painfully aware of that and then how are you feeling about going into Hall H soon? I have 6,000 people. That's all, they, that's all they told me, 6,000 people. So I, uh, I don't know, I'm excited, you know? This is like, this is, this, is, this is gravy. This is not what you sign up for, you know? This is all like the, this, the, the icing on the cake. So I'm just excited, I think it's gonna be great. What is the craziest thing you've seen at Comic-Con so far? I literally, well, the craziest thing about Comic-Con so far is that they flew us here on a private jet from L.A., which is, you know, it's like a two and a half hour drive. Really bad for the environment, but to me that was sort of like the embodiment of what this is, which is just sort of this like machine of, you know, me getting my makeup done on like an airplane on flying from L.A. to San Diego was, was, the, was definitely the weirdest thing so far. And if you could dress up as anything and go onto the convention center floor, what would it be? Thor. I think that's appropriate. You should do that. You might. Maybe, yeah, maybe I'll steal Chris Hemsworth's job. Try to get big enough and try to steal his job. I'm sure I don't he know. needs a break. He probably does need a break. He works a lot.